The Nintendo Switch was released to the world in early 2017, and has seen only a few revisions since. There's the Switch Lite, a portable-only version of the Switch, the regular Switch, which specifically is a revised model from 2019 that's slightly improved over the original, and then there's the newest model, the Switch OLED from late 2021. Retail prices come in at $250, $300, and $350 US dollars respectively, and on the surface, the classic Switch might seem like the best deal of the three. This is due to it having the same amount of power and capability that the OLED model does, even if the display isn't quite as nice, for a full 50 bucks less. It'll play the same games just as well whether on the go or on your TV, the latter of which being something the Switch Lite can't do, as it's portable only, making it more of a better second Switch to have. This Switch seems to sit in that happy medium, but the OLED does have a few advantages for the extra $50. The screen is a bit larger without the device itself being much bigger, thanks to those thinner bezels, and the colors are much more vibrant and and really pop so games just look better. The newer kickstand is vastly superior and the dock is a bit nicer with some padding inside and an ethernet port and that's about all. But the OLED model for only $50 more to me represents the better purchase. So to answer the question right off the bat, absolutely the Switch is still worth buying in 2023. Hey how's it going? I'm Josh from 91Tech and while I do believe most should look to purchase the OLED model, if any of these are going to be on sale it's going to be the base Switch and the Switch Lite and some retailers may even have bundles here and there. Games for Switch, even six years later, don't tend to go on sale too often, so if you want to save some money, I would definitely rather have the older Switch than none at all. And we've established it's worth buying because of course it is. It's the current Nintendo game console, and it's worth having if only to play the current Nintendo games. But the Switch is about six years old already, and it's not getting any younger, with hardware that falls way behind the competition, even if it still can provide a pretty great gaming experience. Just not at 4K, but instead at max 1080p docked on the TV, and then 720p handheld. At the moment, no newer console seems to be on the horizon. Nintendo has denied anything new is coming anytime soon, and whether or not this is true is hard to say, but the OLED model did only release in late 2021, so I think it's a good bet to say the Switch isn't going to be changing for at least the foreseeable future. So with the preamble out of the way, let's go more in depth. How does the Switch hold up six years later, and is it the right console for you? I mentioned already there was a minor revision in 2019, and it may be important to note that while minor, it was still a pretty solid improvement. The battery life jumped significantly, and that alone makes specifically the newer Redbox Switch a superior system. You won't find the original 2017 model anymore, but if you have one already, it might be starting to have a bit of a rough time. The most common issue is going to be poor battery life. If you're looking to buy a new Switch, I would jump straight to the OLED because the regular model isn't going to feel like any kind of upgrade, not that the OLED really is an upgrade either, but it does at least bring a larger, more vibrant screen among the other small things. There's also the option of the Switch Lite, which could potentially make up for your poor battery. It works great as a secondary Switch, with the old one docked on the TV and the Switch Lite for the go. And with Nintendo Online, you get cloud saves, making it easy to play on either. The Switch OLED also has 64 gigabytes rather than the 32 in both the Switch and Switch Lite. However, all three of these consoles have micro SD cards, or rather slots for them. You do have to purchase them separately, though they're very cheap so it's not the biggest deal. When it comes to the Switch Lite versus the others, that TV functionality really is worth having, even if the Switch isn't going to be producing pristine graphics at 4K resolutions. If you want to save some money and don't have any Switch at the moment, I'd strongly urge you to go up to the $300 model. Having the ability to move from the TV to portable is what gives the Switch its name, and while the Switch Lite is a lot of fun, it's too much compromise for only $50 savings. If you ever, ever even think there's a remote possibility you would like to play on the big screen, get the normal Switch, because you'll never have that choice with the Lite. Plus, if there's one thing Nintendo does better than anyone else, it's local multiplayer and couch co-op. Games like Super Smash Bros. and Mario Kart are absolutely iconic for a reason, and you're just too limited with the portable-only Switch Lite. However, one sort of nice thing about the lineup right now is that because not much has changed since 2019, all games will run the exact same across the board on all three Switches. You're not getting any performance boost with a Switch OLED, only the fancier screen. Plus, that screen is the same resolution, and because it's a bit bigger, the older Switch actually looks slightly more sharp. This is because same resolution, smaller display, thus the pixels are slightly more crammed together. It's not a huge difference, and I'd prefer the OLED screen, but even so, it's one small benefit. And the Switch Lite is even slightly sharper, being the smallest screen of the bunch. Battery life is the same on the Switch OLED and the regular Switch. You're looking at four to nine hours, though it depends completely on the game you're playing, with Nintendo giving Breath of the Wild as an example a time of about 5.5 hours, which sounds about right. When it comes to 
overall performance and graphics, the Switch gives a pretty paltry showing compared to the modern generation of consoles in Xbox and PS5. But even so, truthfully, as long as the game you want to play is well optimized, the option to play portably is often worth the downgrading graphics. As an example, this here is Persona 5 Royal, which runs at 4K60 on my PS5 and around 720p at 30 frames per second on the Switch. And while sure, going between the two, the PS5 definitely looks a lot better, if I solely show you the Switch gameplay, you'll probably get used to it pretty quickly. And a big reason why is because it's a fun game and it sucks you in. It might only be 30 frames per second, but the frame rate is still consistent, with no drops whatsoever that I've come across, something that can really distract from the gameplay, but isn't here. And all this makes this 100 hour plus JRPG an amazing game to be able to play wherever and whenever you choose. That's just one game, and notably it's one that by nature of how it plays is going to make a lot of sense for the Switch. And unfortunately, this isn't the case with some other third party titles, and it's very essential to search up reviews to see how performance is before making a purchase. Recently, Sonic Frontiers came out, and while it might be a fun game, it apparently doesn't run very well on Switch. A more atrocious example is The Outer Worlds at launch, which ran horribly, and some faster paced games like maybe Fortnite or Apex Legends, Overwatch 2, you get the idea. They do work on the Switch, some better than others, but certainly aren't the best experience compared to other platforms. So do your research and you should be okay, and as a general rule, Nintendo published titles tend to be well optimized, with some pretty big exceptions, such as Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which runs just horribly, though apparently is fun enough that many fans are still willing to play it through anyways. And hey, when it comes down to it, the Switch is just a lot of fun, thanks to the huge library of both first-party Nintendo and third-party titles, the latter of which were practically non-existent on the Wii U, which was a large part of its commercial failure. But the Switch has sold amazingly well for Nintendo, and it means every game developer out there wants to get a piece of that pie. So for better or for worse, a lot of games are still coming out for the Switch and will keep coming out for the Switch. Just make sure you look up the game beforehand and see that it runs okay. If you are a bit put off by the potential slowdowns and low graphics, there's finally a genuine competitor in the handheld market, and that's with the Steam Deck, which is essentially a gaming PC in the body of kind of a Switch. Battery life on it doesn't tend to be too good, but graphics and frame rate potential is much higher than the Switch, as it's a significantly more powerful system. And with the right optimization, you can stretch out that battery. Some may be intimidated by the whole PC aspect of things, and if that's the case for you, a Switch is probably the better option, but if you want to pump as much performance as you can out of your handheld, the Steam Deck is going to be the way to go. Otherwise, the Switch pretty much stands alone in the portable gaming market, with the main competitors really just being the other two models at either $50 more or $50 less. If you can find that main Switch on sale or in a bundle, it's definitely worth buying. And I'd say it's worth buying at $300 regardless. But the Switch OLED for only $50 more is probably still going to be the console to go for, again bringing the best overall experience or not that much more cash in the grand scheme of things. The question of whether or not a Switch Pro could be on the horizon has floated around for a few years now, or probably more likely at this point just a Switch 2, maybe as soon as 2024? This doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon, at least according to Nintendo's claims. The OLED model probably was that Switch Pro, maybe just scaled back from the original plans. Either way, the Switch is going to be relevant for a long time to come, and with titles like the new Zelda Breath of the Wild coming in 2023, there's still a lot of life left in this amazing console. It might not be powerful, but it's just pure, unadulterated fun, and when it comes down to it, isn't that what matters? So before we end things here, there are a couple catches worth noting. The first is that if you want to play games online, you will need a Nintendo Online subscription, which starts at $20 a year and offers a couple benefits, including a library of Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, which is pretty cool. They also have the $50 tier, which gives N64 and Genesis games, along with some expansion stuff like maps for Mario Kart and whatnot. I'd say the $20 tier is a good deal and worth it, but the higher one is also there for those who really want it. The other catch is going to be on the durability front specifically, not so much with the console itself, but the Joy-Con controllers. These things are infamous for getting drift, which is when the analog stick basically thinks it's being moved in a certain direction, regardless of where it's actually pointing. Meaning you may randomly have your character move the wrong way and fall off a cliff, or in the worst of cases, have a completely unusable controller. Nintendo does have a repair program for this, but beyond that, there's not much you can do besides be careful with your controllers and try to keep them clean. Don't eat with them, and so on. If I had to throw in another negative, I'd go with the pricing of games and maybe the performance of certain titles as mentioned. Again, comes down to doing your own research, and while sales can be rare, they do happen. Though some titles just never seem to go on sale regardless of their age, or only get a few bucks knocked off when they do. I'm looking at you, Skyrim. But overall, the Switch is worth it, and definitely worth it over the Switch Lite. The OLED Switch for 
50 bucks more is probably the most worth it, but the regular one is still absolutely a good purchase all the same. And if you don't have one yet, what are you waiting for? There's so many games at this point to sink your teeth into. You're only missing out if you haven't jumped on the Nintendo bandwagon yet, so I say go for it. And with that, I think we're right about done here. How many of you have the Switch? How's it working for you? Do you still think it's worth it six years later? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to give the video a like if it helped you out or you found it interesting. Maybe consider subscribing if you're into tech. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.